I would post it and wake up the next day. I'll get like a hundred comments of different people's email addresses. And I was like, oh, wow, there's really like some demand here. My royalties from some of the TV shows that I'd done started drying up. And so at that point, I was like, well, how can I separate myself from everybody else? I'd rather just put out the information for other people. And if they want to take it and run with it, I hope you do. And I hope you make a ton of money, basically. So, Welcome back to the Virtual Ventures Podcast. I have Eric here today for our newest episode. Eric, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Dude, I'm doing good. You know, just grinding. I know we were just chatting off offline. Mm-hmm. We're just going through, working the good stuff, trying to keep up with the ever-growing world and economy. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the show, dude. You've been popping up all over on Twitter for me. I've been following you for a little while now. You've been crushing it in a few different areas that we're going to kind of walk through. But Thanks. I like to just go right into things. You were a songwriter in college, had a few TV (laughs) gigs from that, joined Universal, a huge media agency, something around those lines. Signs a lot of big artists, easy way to put it. Um, And you you played a big role in their YouTube, which I thought was a really cool point in that career for you. Maybe just talk through that a little bit so the audience gets to know you. So uh, for the YouTube channel specifically, basically, when I started at Universal, I was just a temp. So like I was working in the music industry as a songwriter, but for those of you who don't know, songwriting is extremely political. So it's like a lot of like who you know, and there's a lot of nepotism in that industry. So my royalties from some of the TV shows that I'd done started drying up. And so at that point I was like, well, how can I separate myself from everybody else? So I went and got a temp job at Universal and basically was just doing administrative work. And it was supposed to be three weeks the temp job, then it was, then it turned into five months, then it turned into nine months. And I ultimately parlayed it into a full-time job in a different department working in the YouTube department. So basically my uh, temp job was labeling. So I was li- literally listening to songs in the catalog and tagging them for specific lyrics, they would say. So if a song said sun or sunshine, I had to click sun or sunshine as basically like an input box so that people could search it later that are higher up in the company and they could just be like i want to populate all the songs that say sunshine and so it was very labor intensive it was honestly like i felt like bot work to an extent but (laughs) they needed humans doing it and so yeah that was what i was doing initially and then i got hired to work in the youtube department which was if you've ever seen like uh pre-roll ads on videos on youtube if somebody has like a vlog and there's a justin bieber song in it Justin, I mean, uh, Universal will put an ad on that video and they'll redirect the ad revenue to Justin Bieber, for example, and there'll be a Tide commercial basically sitting on it. So we had we had a department of people that were just sitting there and placing ads. That's literally all we would do. And I did that for like three years and it was brutal. Um, I mean, (laughs) I loved my time there, but I was like, I need to find some way out of this because I felt like I was kind of a cog in the wheel and could be easily replaceable. So I just felt like this wasn't me. Like, I felt like I could just, I could do more than this. So I was like, I don't really know how to get out of this. In college, I didn't honestly listen that much. I was kind of just focused on like making music uh, because I started just getting paid for doing that. So I was just, I would go to class and pass my classes. But other than that, I wasn't going above and beyond or really retaining anything because my heart wasn't really in it. But um, I found at this point, I really kind of needed some sort of education to kind of like fall back on, like actually listening and listening and like knowing like, okay, this is how business works. So this is how whatever works. So I was like, I don't really know what to do. And so one of my friends had, uh, he was like friends with that guy, Ty Lopez, Uh and had kind of drawn me to his videos. And I was like, this guy's kind of a scammer or whatever. Like, I'm not going to like listen to him. And then I saw one of his pre-roll ads on YouTube that was like here in my garage. And he was talking about knowledge and all this stuff. And I was like, well, it actually makes sense. Like if you read books, maybe there's good information in there from like biographies or whatever it is. So I just like went online to Amazon and I bought like 15 books and I was like, some I'm not going to like, some I am going to like, but I'm going to trial and error and just try to like find the ones that resonate with me. And then from those ones that are about like business and stuff like that, maybe I can kind of glean some insights that I could apply to my own life. So uh, I read books by like a bunch of different CEOs and uh, business people and just tried to retain as much information and glean as much information and insights as possible. And from that, I basically uh, came up with this concept 
to take our YouTube channel, which at Universal, we had a YouTube channel that was kind of dormant. We had a couple million subscribers, but like we weren't doing anything with it. And I was like, well, why don't we take our YouTube channel and then have our songwriters come onto the YouTube channel to teach master classes. And then with that, we can go to companies like Fender and have them sponsor it, be like endorsements. So basically how it works is typically songwriters in the music industry, they don't really get, or historically, they haven't really gotten to participate in these kinds of like public image type revenue streams. Usually a brand like Fender will go to like Miguel or like uh, Justin Bieber or somebody that's like an artist and they'll go to them to endorse them, but they won't go to the songwriters themselves. So the idea was to lean into our songwriters a little bit more and give them a new revenue stream. And it would be a little bit cheaper for a company like Fender to work with them. But at the same time, it would be like a great opportunity. Um, so uh, built like a small team at a lower level universal around it, like the other people in my department and some other people outside of my department, but still like on the same level. And just like refine this proposal and then worked up the executive ladder to pitch it to different people and get them to help refine it get some other people to buy into it that maybe had a little bit more clout internally. And then, uh, yeah, just pitched it up the ladder and ultimately got to the CEO and uh, she uh, funded it. So basically it was Jody Gerson, who is the head of publishing because I was at the publishing company. And uh, yeah, she uh, funded it. I broke off from the YouTube team at that time to go work in business affairs and just work on new business ideas full time for like two years. So I would find like gaps in the market essentially and just try to figure out how to exploit them. And then I would pitch them to the executive staff. And they would be all like music centric stuff. So it could be anything from like Alexa skills to some more like nuanced stuff that were like gaps in the legal system and uh, just see what could hit. And so I was doing that for like two years and yeah, I was just doing market research for them, which kind of parlayed into exploding ideas to an extent. Dude, that's amazing. And I, And I did a little homework, like I said, your favorite book, at least what you said, was A Passion to Win by Summer Redstone. It's one of the ones that was really interesting to you. Yeah. I like to read. It was something I wish I did a lot more when I was younger. My parents tried and tried, but you know, I just didn't want to listen. I just skimmed through the pages and put together a shitty book report every year. Yeah. Um, but I mean, clearly you were very innovative. You were at this, I mean, Universal is a really big company. It's not a, a small feat to get to the CEO to pitch something. I mean, I, I work in big corporate America. It's not that easy to get in front of the CEO and let them hear you out on a pitch. So you were, you were very innovative and you were making changes and you were making decisions. At what point did you want to leave that? Because, I mean, it seems like if you would have stuck it out, you had a pretty good career at Universal. What made you want to pivot? Um, well, during the pandemic, Basically, I got really into coding and I was in this uh, mentorship program, like this formal thing that they'd started there where it was the idea was to bring people closer together. And so I got placed with the president of the company and we would just have like weekly meetings basically where he would like help me with different things. And he paid for me to basically take some coding classes online and he like paid for like a year subscription basically. So I could just like all you can eat for this specific coding teacher. And I just got really into it. I was like, okay, I'm working from home now because it was a pandemic. We weren't in the office. I'm going to do like two, three hours a day and just kind of sit on the couch and do this thing and learn it. Cause I got scared to learn it prior. Like I had a couple of attempts in the past to learn how to code, but I had like, it wasn't that easy for me to pick up. So I was like, okay, I got to take the pandemic as an opportunity. Since I'm working from home, I can't go and talk with, I can't like be around other people, go to bars, whatever. So I'm just going to like focus on upscaling because I felt like working at a company like that, that's kind of in a way, uh, I mean, music industry is kind of contracting. It's not like a futurist company. It's definitely like kind of like on like the downfall, if anything. Um, and I was like, I really need to upskill if I really want to make more money. And also just, I'm interested in coding and I just really need to conquer this fear that I have because I definitely found that like sometimes the best opportunities on the other side of fear. And this was something that I was really scared of and really struggled to grasp. But I always was fine with like navigating the computer. I just didn't understand coding. So I just doubled down and learned how to code. And then through that, I got really into crypto, which I feel like a lot of people probably did during the pandemic. So then I yeah. learned Solidity, which is the coding language for Ethereum. And 
I was like, well, this is really interesting. I feel like it's some like futuristic stuff. I don't know where it's going to go, if it's going to fall apart, apart or if it's going to be successful long term. But I feel like I need to just roll the dice with my career a little bit because I'm still young. So I need to yeah. just try it. So I ended up leaving and going to a venture capital firm in crypto. Dude, that, that that's amazing. And I'm I'm somebody who's like thought about coding, thought about learning coding mm-hmm. a million times, but have never really leaned in. Have you tried it? No, like I haven't even gotten a square one. <laughs> I've been I've just been too I, I I have a bad habit of putting things off to the side, and that's definitely one of the things that's been pushed off to the side. But uh-huh. how much do you think learning to code has impacted your success and the way that you go about certain things now? Because I know it's like a huge skill to have. Um, Well, I guess to start out with the most like the way that it moved the needle initially was I wanted to go work in crypto and I applied to work at this one VC firm. And in my interviews, when they heard that I knew how to code, but I was trying to work on the business side because I had worked on the business side historically. I'd been in the music industry. I also worked on contracts and stuff and negotiations while I was there. So matching that with knowing how to code, they were like, okay, this guy, he can probably figure things out if they're very abstract. Also, he has this coding stuff or knowledge, so he can probably learn about he can know about the apps that we're looking at to invest in because we were investing in a lot of companies. He'll probably be able to understand them at like a fundamental level and that could be extremely useful so i saw it immediately because i was offered a job that i would never have been offered if i didn't know how to code because they never would have hired me if i didn't know how to code so they saw that as an extremely compelling thing like every interview that i went into because i had to do four interviews with them somebody said something about it so they saw that it is like a feather in my cap and the ability to conquer something relatively difficult so i think that really played well and i think that's just like step one how it helped me it's also helped me because i've built exploding ideas from scratch with code i mean i use the beehive api to log my subscribers but the whole platform that i've built is just in next.js i just coded it from scratch i use my own template that i've created and yeah i mean it's it's helped me so much yeah and coding is is just this special skill i feel that that elevates you above most individuals and then if you can attach this business sense and business background because no knock on engineers i mean you 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 all make everything work but sometimes they're not so social or they're not great in conversation they're just amazing at coding and what they do having a mix of both is so dangerous (laughs) when you get out there and can get in the weeds technically but also talk high level and understand what a business actually needs and wants how was your experience at that VC firm? Um, it was great. I learned so much. And to your point, yeah, I mean, coding could be extremely valuable, especially when paired. I mean, the thing I think that always kind of resonates or just kind of uh, seems to be true is that like the hard things kind of become easy things over time. And then like you just have to take the next step and find the next hard thing. So I think that coding now is such a commoditized skill. Anybody can learn to code. You know, but yep. if you have the business sense, maybe you understand SEO really well and marketing, maybe sales, and you can pair it all together. That's kind of where the opportunity is, I think, now because that's the hard thing. Coding, anybody can go online and learn how to do it. They just have to put time into it. But if you can pair that with other skills that are also difficult to obtain, then you kind of that's where you get your edge. So uh, I guess parlaying that into the part about the VC firm, that's the one thing that I really learned while I was working there is that you need an edge. And don't pursue anything in which you don't have an edge. That's kind of like where exploding ideas, in a sense, comes from. I have ideas all the time. And like from doing market research at at Universal, there are so many different things that I've researched that I found opportunities around. I only lean into them if I have an edge. And so, like the couple businesses that I have, they all exploit my edge, where a lot of these ideas that are in exploding ideas are ideas that other people might have an edge for. So I broadcast them out. It's like, I want to do the research. I want to learn, but it's not necessarily best for me to pursue some of these things, but they could be really great for somebody else. So I put all the market research and everything in the long-term version of the exploding ideas and uh, somebody else can run with it from there. But what I got from the VC firm was that uh, you really need an edge and don't pursue anything in which you don't have an edge because that's ultimately what's going to make you win. So yeah. I found the experience to be really great. Yeah, and 
you were poached from that company by one of the portfolio companies to come run head of strategy. So clearly you, I mean, anybody listening would understand too, like you have a lot of skills and you have a good understanding of a wide variety of, of different areas, which I think is why you've had so much success with exploding ideas. And I want to completely pivot and go start talking about that because that's really what you're building right now. Mm -hmm. And I've got to throw your nickname out there. People call you the Reddit guy, <laughs> built businesses on the back of Reddit and Facebook groups, yeah. exploding ideas being that main one. Let's talk a little bit about that. So exploding ideas being the main one or some of the other ones or yeah. Let's just talk about, let's just start with building a business on the back of Reddit and then really dive into exploding ideas. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is something I've done a few times. I would say one of the ones that I had built prior was actually kind of bigger than exploding ideas uh, in that the email list for exploding ideas is like 8,400 subscribers. I built another one on Reddit or off the back of Reddit that was 55,000 subscribers. So it was a little bit bigger. And that was a software business. It was a music software business. Basically, I saw on Reddit that in some of these music subreddits, people were talking about vocal presets, which vocal presets are like these presets that you put on your vocals. So if you get Logic Pro or Pro Tools or something like that, you throw this channel strip setting over your vocals and it'll make you sound like Young Thug or Travis Scott or like a rapper like that. Super auto-tuned, really reverbed out, that kind of stuff. Usually the people that want this stuff are aspiring rappers or singers that like Kid Leroy or somebody like that. And they want to rap or sing, but they don't have the engineering experience. So this gives them that instant gratification, if that makes sense. So I saw on Reddit, people were like P2P trading this. So it was like, I built a vocal preset. Do you want it? And then somebody would be like, yeah, here's my email. Send it to me. So I was like, okay, this is kind of crazy. Maybe I can create some structure around this. So I saw that the vocal presets domain name was available. So I went and bought it on GoDaddy. And then I parlayed it into trying to build like a brand around it, essentially, of which I sold it in 2021, I think it was, or 2020. But anyways, the idea was to basically create a centralized place for these vocal presets and make people more or less feel like I created the idea, if that makes sense. So um, I would just post on Reddit and in these Facebook groups that were pertaining to like Logic Pro users or Pro Tools users. I would be like, I created some vocal presets. Does anybody want one for free, basically? And I would get like a ton of people listing their email addresses on Facebook, for example. I would wake, I would post it and wake up the next day. I'll get like a hundred comments of different people's email addresses. And I was like, oh, wow, there's really like some demand here. So I did the same thing on Reddit and I'll go number one in all these music subreddits. And there's just demand. People just wanted it. People, and then mods would take my post down sometimes because it was a security issue because too many people were posting their emails, which was kind of funny. But then That's it was awesome. just like they would blow up my DMs. But it was just like I identified just clear demand there. I saw a trend happening and I just capitalized on it, moved really fast. Um, I think I spent like a hundred dollars on it to get like the domain to set up the Shopify store, like all that kind of stuff. And ultimately like it was profitable in like two months. So, um, profitable in that, like I invested a little bit more money after I started getting people downloading it in like, just trying to push it more and create more products. But, uh, yeah, it started making like a few thousand dollars in like two or three months. So it was like, that was just a side thing too. So I wasn't really spending that much time on it. It was just identifying a trend and just being first to capitalize on it. Cause that's like a big thing with the exploding ideas, just being first. So yeah, uh, hopefully that gives some context. Yeah. And, and was that like your first taste of, of building something online and seeing success? Is that, was that like the, the oh shit moment? Like I need to go all in on this and now I can parlay this into multiple other industries, not just one I'm really comfortable in. Um, it wasn't my first time getting that like, oh shit moment with like <laughs> something online, but it was like a big like moment for me, like mentally, cause I was able to sell it and flip it and I was like, oh, wow, like some things that I have may be valuable. Um, so I had a couple other ones in the music space that also uh, made money relatively quickly. It's just kind of like always identifying that trend and capitalizing on it first before anybody else and finding the hole in the market of where I can lean into my own skill set to really take it to the next level and run with it, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, but Reddit has been like a great place for me to kind of like sandbox these ideas. And I feel very comfortable on Reddit. I've always been a reddit user for like seven years so it's just the platform that i've always used so yeah love reddit 
Yeah. I mean, from an outside perspective, I've never been a Reddit user and I came across your content because I saw how much success you were having on Reddit. I was like, all right, let me give it a shot. And to me, it's it's relatively hard to break into. It feels a little gate kept. You got to kind of, if you know, you know. And I, I wrote down a tweet, an interesting tweet that you said, and it was like, if you can make it on Reddit, you can make it anywhere. And I don't know if that is a testament to Reddit being a little bit of a harder platform to break into, but maybe talk a little bit about that. Reddit's brutal. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's really it. Like people are skeptical just reading anything that you post. They automatically want to like rip you apart, you know? So it's definitely like a brutal, brutal platform. Um, but yeah. if you can find somebody, something that like really resonates with the people there and that really like provides them value, cause that's really what it is. It's just like building something that really provides these people value that they really appreciate. And then I think that you can go to other platforms relatively easy and push it, you know, cause it's so hard on Reddit. So if you can master Reddit, then you can roll whatever you have into other platforms and it'll resonate with the audience if you can identify them there and follow them. Like if you're looking for like web developers or entrepreneurs or something and you really hit it on Reddit with them, like you really resonate with them, you can roll that into like Facebook groups or on Twitter and just find the same kind of audience there. And they may be less skeptical because on Reddit, they're just like born skeptical. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, yeah, it's a hard platform and it's really (laughs) difficult culturally like to overcome that and like learn how people interact and how to like, build things that they appreciate and want to learn about. That's like a whole thing in itself. So I get you. Thank you all for listening to this podcast. Just wanted to take a quick second to give a shout out to Micromedia. Micromedia is the company that I use to essentially create this podcast that you all are consuming right now. They handle my long form editing and my short form editing. I would be pressed to find anybody that's doing better short form than we are here at virtual ventures and micromedia is the company that's making that happen so feel free to reach out to me i can put you in contact with them if that's something you're interested in um and enjoy the rest of the show yeah no i i I spent like 45 minutes i was like all right i see what eric's doing i'm gonna go to a subreddit and i'm gonna take 45 minutes and write a long detailed response i wrote it i was like this is great i linked the newsletter very subtly in one little word mm-hmm. next thing you know i've got like 15 down votes people are hating on me in the comments and i'm like holy crap man like i i, I didn't think it was that bad like and I, and then i got it taken down by a mod they were like this isn't this is in our community i was like okay maybe i need to do a little more homework before i really crack into this but it, it's true it is you got to kind of understand how people communicate in there, what they're really looking for. Because after that, I, I went through and I started reading some of the other comments that were making. I was like, all right, that's not really what I just wrote. Like mm-hmm. mine was very like fake, try and like drive value, but also plug myself. And then I'm reading the other ones where people are plugging themselves, but in a very personal way of like, here's what's going on. Here's the honest answer if you care, this is the link where I was like, and I can help you in here and I can do it. It was, I just went about it the wrong way, but I think it is a platform with a, like I said, a ton of, because I I did another one. I did another post and I got like 15 upvotes and people actually cared and were nice. So it's like, okay, I, I, I get it. Like you really got to spend the time. It's not something that you could just do quickly where you just jump in a subreddit, write a post and it's like, Oh, I'm going to do great. And And I I think think some people think that. Yeah, no, no, 100%. Ahead. And I think that what you did was that was really smart was you didn't give up immediately. A lot of people, they're mm-hmm. like, okay, my vote post got downvoted and they get really discouraged and they're like, okay, I'm giving up. I'm not going to that platform anymore. Like it doesn't work, you know? But I think the fact that you saw that you got downvoted and then you looked at other comments to see, okay, how are they resonating? Why is it working for them and it's not working for me? And then you glean some insights from it and you try it again. And you trial and error and you see like ultimately you can figure it out, but you have to figure out the puzzle and like how to be authentic on the platform. And you got a post that got upvoted a bunch. So obviously you cracked it to an extent. So I think that that's like the main kind of like failure that some people have. And I think that that's awesome that you were able to crack it in that way because you were able to basically do this trial and error iteration that that's key. Yeah, no. And 
I agree. Unfortunately, people are, are very quick to to jump to the next thing. Like, oh, it didn't work. It's like, how many times did you try it? And something I love, it's like 30x your output, and then you'll at a bare minimum 10x your input, but you have to actually do the 30x. <laughs> like it's just not gonna start rolling in. Um, so so I totally understand. Explain to people listening what is exploding ideas, what have you built with it, what are your goals with it? Give us a little bit of an overview. So exploding ideas is uh, basically every week I find a new trending topic. Usually I find them on Google Trends. I'll find something that's getting really popular. For example, like cold plunge tubs, cold plunge tubs, sorry. Um, That was the feature last week. And uh, basically I just like overviewed the trend, uh, where it's growing, where the SEO opportunity is so that if you want to build a business around it, you know exactly where the opportunity is. Because I always found that like it took a lot of work to dive in and figure out where a business opportunity is just from building a couple of things online. Like it's like you really have to do like deep research and find out where the hole is and how to exploit it. So I outlined it all in the uh, in the newsletter. And so last week was cold plunge tubs. Cold plunge tubs. I can't <laughs> say it. Um, and then a different week, it was green noise, uh, which green noise, uh, if you're unaware, is basically like white noise, but it's a variant of it. And uh, in the newsletter, basically, I outlined where the opportunity is and I shared how much some uh, players on Spotify and Apple Music are making, putting out this green noise sound, which people listen to it while they're sleeping, basically, or they play for their babies while they're sleeping to soothe them. And I showed that you, some people are making like hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income doing this. And I was like, I'm going to try it. So at the end of the newsletter, I'm like, okay, I'm going to demonstrate that this could maybe work, but I'm rolling the dice. So I bought a domain name around it, and then I put out some green noise sounds. And uh, in the first like month or two, it already has done like a thousand dollars, like a little over a thousand dollars. I put a twenty dollar investment into it. So it's like it's just it's finding amazing. that opportunity, which this was trending because people were talking about it a lot on TikTok as being this like revolutionary white noise alternative, which who knows if it is or not, but people were searching for it. And uh, I got to be, if you search green noise on Google, I'm like the featured, uh, featured like artist or whatever. So I was able to like dominate that as well. So that all kind of translates into just making streaming income, if that makes sense. And I was off $20. So the idea with exploding ideas is how can you create online businesses that are capitalizing on trends that take like no money to build and lean into your expertise or your experience to get there. So yeah, every week I go into a new trend on Sunday is the high level. So you get like the high level idea and then Tuesday is the deep dive. And I also include a bunch of links, like here's different ways to like get free traffic on Reddit or on Facebook groups or whatever it is. So I have other like complimentary resources in there as well. Yeah. Two things from that. One, I'm sure people listening are curious, how did you get to be the featured artist on the Google page? And then second question is, thank you so much for driving all this free value. Is the newsletter paid or is it a a free engagement? The one on Sunday is free. So you can get basically all the details for free in the Sunday newsletter, but on Tuesday I do the deep dive. So if you want to know like the SEO insights, all that kind of stuff, it's like a paid thing, but I have like resources that I'm paying for. So I can't just do that part for free. You know what I mean? So I put all the charts. So like in Ahrefs, which Ahrefs is an SEO tool, I take screenshots. So I'm like, for this week, I'm going to do, or I don't know if this will be launched this week with the podcast, but the (laughs) newsletter that's coming out on Sunday is going to be about faceless YouTube channels. And basically what I did was I went into Ahrefs and I found if faceless YouTube channel as a search term or faceless YouTube channel ideas as a search term on Google has like a one keyword difficulty, which means like you could start ranking instantly if you build a website around it. So I outline that in the long form. And then I go into, here's some different content ideas for different types of content you can put up. Here's how you can build a newsletter around it. And I'm just trying to get somebody started with like creating their own business. So I'm giving them a business plan essentially. So that's really what this is. So yeah. And have you had people come back that are like, dude, you gave me this idea and then I started X, Y, and Z and look at where I'm at now yet? Um, so I've had a couple of people pursuing different ideas from there. And I can see like sometimes in the long form version, I put domain names that have good opportunities with 
the opportunity at hand. So like, for example, there was one, I think about like affiliate marketing, like months back and when it was like really trending on uh, Google. And so I found a keyword search term that had like a zero basically for the uh, keyword difficulty. And I found a domain name that complemented it, that basically capitalized on it. And then I put that in the long form version and somebody bought it within like 20 minutes. But it's essentially, that was the same kind of tactic that I was using when I did the vocal presets. I just bought the keyword, so vocalpresets.com, and then I created a website around it. But that was the keyword that people were searching for. So I incorporate a lot of those same kind of tactics and strategies in the market research for the new subsequent ideas, if that makes sense. So when I'm giving people the idea and the market research behind it, I'm trying to get them to like step one so that they can go and get started. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm I'm sure people are thinking that are listening right now, why don't you just dive into the idea and, and, and execute on it? Why, why are you giving it out to people to go and execute on it? So I only have so much time. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I love learning about things and I love studying trends and I love doing market research. I have three businesses right now, so it's not something that I can just like go and do another one. I don't want to like focus on too many things at once. It's already hard enough focusing on these three. So yeah, I just don't have the time or resources to focus on a million things. So I'd rather just put out the information for other people. And if they want to take it and run with it, I hope you do. And I hope you make a ton of money basically. So yeah, I just don't have the time. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that, that makes perfect sense. And I think it's really cool that you're, that you're driving this value. I think people are really keen on starting a business and don't really have much direction mm -hmm. <laughs> when they start them. And yeah. something that I've said multiple times on multiple episodes is I think people have unfortunately forgotten how hard it is to start a successful business. Like it is not easy. Social media has portrayed that you can get online and sign 15 clients at $3,000 a month. Yeah. And that's just not how that works. I'm sorry to tell you, anybody listening, that's just not how it works. Yeah. And if someone's selling you on the fact that they can do it, you should probably ask why they don't want to make 50 to 100 grand a month on their I'm own. Trying to sell you a course. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think. I think it's really cool that you're giving people the kind of these stepping stones to to jump in because if you have an idea and you have research behind it, that's usually like the hardest part. <laughs> research is not everybody's favorite thing to do. Clearly, it's something that you're very interested in. And it's it's just really cool that you're kind of turning that around and giving it back to people so that they can jump in. And I am very confident that Hopefully I can have you back on the show months from now and we could talk about the multiple success stories of people taking these ideas. And I'm sure you have people that are in the woodworks that haven't brought it up, but are probably succeeding from things that you've given them. H how does that feel? It's got to be really fulfilling. Yeah. I mean, that was like when I worked at the VC firm, just to go back to that, I we all took a personality test. And one thing that I guess I ranked really high for was having an impact. So that was part of the impetus behind starting Exploding Ideas. I wanted to have a greater impact. So yeah, it definitely resonates with that part of me. Like in order for me to have any sort of fulfillment, I need to have an impact. And being able to broadcast ideas and market research like this and seeing the response, that just like was great. I mean, it really resonated with that component of me. I mean, I definitely feel like to an extent, it's probably not the best thing, but I'm never kind of like happy if that makes sense not happy but like i'm never like comfortable with like where i'm at i always want to kind of level up so i think to an extent like if one person says something this week and it's great i'm gonna want like two people the next week which is kind of like a never-ending thing that i think i need to get over but yeah it, it's great uh but i definitely want to achieve more so hey that's definitely not a bad thing like at all and i can i can say that i i, I feel the same way i am I mean, it's it complacency is like one of the scariest things to me. Um, and it's so easy to be complacent, especially when things are going really well. Yeah. So being able to find inside yourself the drive to, to continue on and want more, I think is really important. And I think I that's something that everybody listening needs to really think about because it's not easy. <laughs> you have to work really hard. Like when you hear people quit their nine to five to go be an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, whatever the hell the cool word to say is now, mm -hmm. um, 
it doesn't mean that they're working less. It probably means they're working double. 100%. But hopefully it's something you enjoy, which makes up for that. So really, I, I wanted to highlight there, like you being able to dig deep and, and make these like, make these decisions and continue to grow and, and want more is really important. And I think that's a something small, not huge to someone listening, unless we highlighted it there, but that is a really big trait. Like look for that inside of you. If that's something that you have, go pursue it, like go get out there because not everybody feels that way. A hundred percent. I totally agree with you. You have those three businesses. Now we talked about exploding ideas. What, industries i don't know and how much detail you want to talk how new they are but what, what what do you have cooking um so like moving forward or for the ones that i already have the three that you have right now we've, we've really only talked about exploding ideas so for the other ones one of them is in the music industry and for that one i mean i've owned it for five or six years so i mean it kind of is what it is i'm just continuing to grow it and then uh for the other one, it's in uh, real estate. It's in commercial real estate. Basically, I found in, I mean, it was another like exploding idea, basically, that it was, uh, I didn't write an article about it, but it was market research that I'd done that I found a gap in the market in commercial real estate in a very niche um, kind of like subset. And I created a website around it for San Francisco. And I got to be number five on Google within like two weeks three weeks because there it was like literally a zero keyword difficulty but it's for commercial real estate like property owners so they basically reach out to me and i connect them with lawyers and so it's just like a passive lead generation thing that i'm going to try and scale to a bunch of states because it capitalizes on the market where it currently is going down um so yeah, I'm just going to run it and see how much I can grow it. And I'm just going to build more relationships with different lawyers to build out the infrastructure because I have the leads, like the audience coming in, like people are actively seeking out my website and they have high intent to work together. So now I'm just more of like building the infrastructure around carrying out the service, if that makes sense. So yeah, between the three, um, the commercial real estate one, the uh, music industry one, and the uh, exploding ideas one, it's like I definitely have a lot in dealing with these three. So, uh, But I love doing research. So exploding ideas gives me that outlet where I can just constantly be looking at new ideas and new trends that are happening and just broadcasting them out, but also just staying on top of what's hot because I just want to like be a step ahead if I can, whenever I can. And if I fall behind, then I miss opportunities. So, I mean, not to go on a tangent, but I miss drop shipping and I missed affiliate marketing to an extent. So I felt like if I was around and paying attention in those times, I could have really capitalized on them. So I don't want to let that happen again. So exploding ideas forces me to constantly be learning and diving in the weeds on these different things. So and writing market research plans around them, which really gets like my brain exercising, I guess, to an extent, but also uh, makes me think about the idea and if it's something to add to my other list of businesses like is this something that i could really win at so yeah yeah for sure and i feel like we talked about the reddit and facebook groups but the mm -hmm. majority of these businesses are seeing success through seo seo is like facebook marketing i think a little bit of a black hole mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that simple and right. it's something that is is I, i'm i'm currently trying to learn right now mm -hmm. as i try and, and and gain this organic traffic what tips and and kind of maybe debunking anything that is common knowledge like what in what ways could you help people listening who want to get into seo right now i would say lean into whatever you have an edge in so for example with the commercial real estate thing i noticed that in the specific niche that i was targeting it was clear that the companies that were currently in the space didn't understand SEO. So I didn't really understand much about real estate, but I can have ChatGPT4 basically educate me and I can do research online and learn about the space to the extent that I need to know about it. But I'm leaning into SEO and that's how I think I will ultimately win because my competitors don't use SEO. They mail flyers to people's houses. So when you're looking at the specific part of the market that I'm targeting, which is the lower end, uh, this is like owners under $20 million. So they have like buildings that are worth under $20 million. 
they first thing they do is they go to Google and they search how to do this or how do I find somebody to hire to do this for me. So that's when my articles pop up to be in the top five. So I'm trying to resonate with them and I'm leaning into my edge of SEO because none of these other companies that are my competitors are even paying attention to it. So that's that. I really just uh, look to lean into my edge. And I think that's really the best thing that you can do on top of buy Ahrefs, you know, pay monthly for it. It's expensive. I think it's like a hundred bucks, maybe something like that, but it's worth it. And they have an academy where you can just like learn how to use the tool. And there's also a guy named Jaum Ross, Jaum, J-A-U-M-E-R-O-S, that's his name, on YouTube. He's amazing at teaching about SEO. I love him. So I've learned a lot from him as well. And it's really just about like finding a hole in the market. Like if you're going to find something on Ahrefs that has like a 10 keyword difficulty, you're not ranking for it quickly. If you find yeah. something with a zero, then there's, and it's something that you believe the trend is going to go up over time then you could probably rank for it really fast. Then once you start getting some backlinks through reaching out to like other blogs to like guest posts for them, then you can really ramp your site up. So you got to look for that gap in the market, just like with any of these ideas, just finding the gap or finding the trend and figuring out how you can plug yourself to capitalize on it. So I'd say SEO is very similar to Reddit. It's very similar to like creating like any online business to an extent. So it's just another method of getting an audience. Yeah. No, Is that helpful? Think, or? Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's perfect. And I love that you linked that YouTube because I need to go do my homework. So selfishly, that's a win for me. And then anybody who is still here listening with us, that's a win for you too. If you're interested in SEO, here's somebody who's executing on it right now and giving you a free plug to somebody who has taught them a lot of what they know. That's the beautiful thing about the internet. We are at a very even playing field. We all have access to a lot of the same information. It's just about who's actually going to put in the time 100%. and go do it. That's the edge. Like you always need an edge. Your edge half the time is just putting in the work and like learning about something that's maybe outside your comfort zone, but you're really strong in something that's complementary that you can leverage. Like me in the real estate with the SEO, I know nothing about real estate, but I know how to do SEO. So I kind of like learn about real estate to the extent that I need to from ChatGPT4 and from Googling, but pair that with my strength that I'm trying to leverage, which is SEO. And if I want to succeed in SEO for this specific niche, I just need to lean into that and just be able to appeal to my audience. But you can just like really lean into this stuff by like just leverage what you're good at, leverage what you're good at and pair it with like an antiquated market or something with a tailwind or something like that. And you can really just kill it. I think. Yeah, no, I, I really couldn't agree more with you. And I think there's just been a ton of value dropped in this episode. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for that. And I'm sure the listeners are thankful as well. Um, as we get to the tail end here, people who are familiar with the show know what time it is. If you're not, this question gets asked on every single episode. And the question is, Eric, what are you excited about in the near future? Um waking up tomorrow and working <laughs> i mean to be hey. honest i just love waking up every day and working on this stuff it's just really fun for me it's like a video game so i'm just excited to do it for another day to be honest very fair and simple answer i'm sure tons of other people feel the same way i can agree with you on that once you're doing something that you really enjoy it's kind of like sleep is a little bit of a chore because you want to get up and do the same thing again the next day so I love that answer. Eric, where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? Um, and then we'll have your newsletter link below as well, along with the socials. Awesome. So Twitter, that's where I am primarily. Uh, Twitter.com slash Eric Lamb Ideas. So E-R-I-C-L-A-M Ideas, I-D-E-A-S. And then they can also find me at the newsletter. So explodingideas.co. So in either of those two places, Awesome. Eric, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Thanks for and having me. I can't wait for this episode to come out. Likewise. Likewise.